Jesus manifested his glory and his disciples believed in him. Good morning everyone. This is Father Theodore Hunt bringing you greetings once again from the Church of St. Stephen Downsview. I wish to extend a very warm welcome to everyone joining us today on this second Sunday after Epiphany. We are particularly delighted to welcome those who may be visiting us for the first time online today. Thank you so very much for coming. In the next few minutes, I invite you to listen prayerfully as we are led in our first and second scripture lessons by Shalon Jeffers. In today's sermon, I will address you on the topic, Since God is Present. Leading us as we pray and intercede today will be Steve Clark. Draw your church together, O Lord, into one great company of disciples, together following our Lord Jesus Christ into every walk of life, together serving him in his mission to the world, and together witnessing to his love on every continent and island. We ask this in his name and for his sake. Amen. I pray that God might bless you richly as you worship with us today. A Collect for the Second Sunday After Epiphany Almighty God, your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, is the light of the world. May your people, illumined by your word and sacraments, shine with the radiance of his glory, that he may be known, worshipped, and obeyed to the ends of the earth, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Dig deeper into today's service. Scan the QR code for text and lyrics. Remember to like us on YouTube. And leave a comment. Now, let's join Reverend Father Theodore Hunt. Processional hymn.
A reading from the book of Isaiah, chapter 62, verses 1 to 5. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest, until her vindication shines out like the dawn, and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication, and all the kings your glory, and you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord, and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. You shall no more be termed forsaken, and your land shall no more be termed desolate. But you shall be called, My delight is in her, and your land married. For the Lord delights in you, and your land shall be married. For as a young man marries a young woman, so shall your builder marry you. And as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall your God rejoice over you. The Word of the Lord. A reading from Psalm 36, verse 5 to 10. Your love, O Lord, reaches to the heavens, and your faithfulness to the clouds. Your righteousness is like the strong mountains, your justice like the great deep. You save both man and beast, O Lord. How priceless is your love, O God! Your people take refuge under the shadow of your wings. They feast upon the abundance of your house. You give them drink from the river of your delights. For with you is the well of life, and in your light we see light. Continue your loving kindness to those who know you, and your favor to those who are true of heart. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 12, verses 1 to 11. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you are pagans, you were enticed and led astray to idols that could not speak. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking by the Spirit of God ever says, Let Jesus be cursed. And no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit, who allots to each one individually, just as the Spirit chooses. The Word of the Lord.
A reading from the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John, chapter 2, reading from verse 1 to 11. On the third day there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding twenty or thirty gallons. Jesus said to them, Fill the jars with water and they filled them up to the brim. He said to them, Now draw some out, and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. When the steward tasted the water that had become wine, and did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs, in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. This is the Gospel of Christ. Good morning, friends, and welcome. As we gather on this second Sunday after the Epiphany, I invite you now to bow your head with me as we pray. Good and gracious God, we are so thankful for the privilege to be able to gather in your presence at this time. We thank you, O God, 
not just for the promise of your presence with us, but for the reality of your presence in our lives. Pour upon us this day, O God, your spirit afresh and anew, that our lives may pour forth into this world the new life that you give and share with us. We ask, O Lord, that you change us and transform us. For the glory of your name we pray. Amen. Friends, I want to share with you this morning some words from John's Gospel, chapter 2, reading from verse 1 to verse 2. There John tells us that on the third day there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. Early last week, my daughter celebrated her fifth birthday, and almost immediately after the Christmas season, she and her sister had begun to count down the days until her birthday. And so every day there was an update as to how many days were remaining before it would be her birthday. She was very excited. And about two days before her birthday, she asked me, Daddy, is tomorrow my birthday? To which, of course, I replied, No, but when you go to sleep tonight and you wake up tomorrow, then you can say that tomorrow is your birthday. Which, of course, did not make her feel any better because she really wanted her birthday to be now. She wanted her birthday to arrive. She knows that in our house, birthdays mean celebrations. As a family, we would spend the entire day together. She would get to decide what she would do that day. She would get to decide what she wanted to eat, where she wanted to go. Essentially, she would get to be the boss on her birthday. And by the way, she made up a song to that effect. She gets to be the boss on her birthday. And the celebrations, of course, would culminate in the evening with the presentation of a birthday cake. She would get to blow out her candles and we would all sing happy birthday. She could hardly wait because she knew that with the arrival of her birthday, it meant that the celebrations would happen. She knew what the arrival of her birthday entailed. Jesus, in our gospel reading for today, is not at a birthday celebration, but he is at the wedding, a wedding in Cana of Galilee, to which both he and the disciples have been invited, a celebration which could typically last for at least a week. And during the celebration, John tells us that the wine runs out. And this was a catastrophe, serious enough to end any kind of celebration of this kind. But Jesus is present. Jesus is there at the wedding. And instinctively, Mary, the mother of Jesus, she turns to him and says, they have no more wine. And so perhaps with a similar kind of anticipation and expectation as my daughter had in terms of looking forward to her birthday, Mary instinctively knows that since Jesus is present at these celebrations, that the celebration is only just getting started. The party is only just about to begin. She expects that he will do something. She doesn't know what it is, but she expects that he will do something. And it seems she can hardly wait to see what he will do in this situation. Here we are today, gathered once again in this way virtually for worship. And gathering in this way, make no mistake about it, is an ongoing challenge, friends, for many who would wish to be present and to gather in person, but feel that they cannot for any number of reasons, but particularly for health concerns. It is a continuing challenge for those for whom gathering in person is their primary means of human contact week by week. 
Human beings are relational creatures. We have been created as such. We have a language, we have feelings, we have emotions. We have sensitivities. We thrive on that human-to-human -human connection through relational partnerships. An important part of our commitment as followers of Christ is to the weekly gathering of the corporate community and to the reception of the Holy Sacrament of his body and blood. And so gathering virtually is challenging. But historically, this is certainly not the first challenge which the church has faced, which has threatened its regular corporate gathering or threatened to end its Eucharistic celebration week by week. Right from its very inception, the church faced persecution from the rulers, from the powers and authorities of this age. It has been challenged from within by divisions, by schism, by separation on disagreements over beliefs and practices. It has been stifled by disputes over leadership. Who should be in charge? It has been hampered by scandals and by internal questions about who is truly being obedient to the word of God. It has struggled many times on account of, of apathy and complacency with regard to proclaiming the good news of the gospel which we are sent to do. But yet in every instance, friends, when it seems as if a significant crisis has arisen which would threaten the ongoing celebration, God acts in faithfulness to his promise, in faithfulness to his nature, in order to keep the party going, if you will. Mary could hardly wait for Jesus to keep the party going at this wedding in Cana of Galilee. She really wanted him to do something. But Jesus turns and says to her, What has that to do with me? My hour has not yet come. For you see, God's perfect timing is always independent of how we may perceive the urgency of the particular moment. God's timing is not our timing. And so Mary turns to the servants and she says to them, Do whatever he tells you to do. Do whatever he tells you to do. And as we know, when at Jesus' direction, the servants fill the water jugs, draw some of it out, take it to the head steward, they discover that that water has become wine. And not just any wine, friends, but the good stuff. Wine better than they had had at the beginning of this celebration. And so Mary's instincts about Jesus turned out to be spot on. She was right on the money. They found themselves in a challenging circumstance at this wedding in Cana. Certainly a potentially embarrassing situation for the family of the bride and the bridegroom. But since Jesus was present, Mary, at least, rightly anticipated and expected that the party would indeed go on, that it was, in fact, just getting started. Given the more obvious challenges that the church is facing at this time on account of the pandemic, and perhaps even the less obvious challenges of the numerical decline, or the always growing secularism of society, I thought it might be helpful for us to reflect on the gospel from this perspective. That is to recognize that since Jesus is present in and with and through his gathered community, we can anticipate and expect that the celebration will go on. We can anticipate and expect that the real celebration, friends, is only just getting started. 
In the 12th chapter of Paul's letter to the Corinthians, Paul speaks of the many and the, the various gifts, spiritual gifts, which Christ has bestowed upon his body of believers. Gifts of wisdom, of knowledge, gifts of faith, of healing, of miracles, gifts of prophecy, of tongues, and of their interpretation. And then Paul writes, he says, to each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. In other words, friends, God has already equipped his church, that is you and I, through this abiding Holy Spirit with everything that it requires in order that we may be sustained through this and any other challenge which the church will ever encounter in this life. God has already equipped us with everything that we will need to go on. And so since God is present, we can anticipate and we can expect that the celebration, the Eucharistic Thanksgiving celebration, we can expect that it will indeed go on. And friends, we have seen it here in our own ministries and the ways in which our ministries and operations have been able to pivot and continue in the midst of this pandemic. We have seen it in the way where finances that we've received from unexpected and unanticipated sources have helped us to meet our obligations and to support and to continue our ministry in this place. We have seen it in the way that God has continued to raise up individuals within this parish with specific skill sets and giftings when others could not continue for various reasons in order to sustain the work to which he has called us in this part of his vineyard. You see, friends, we have only to remain alert and to remain awake to the reality of God's presence with us, to recognize how he is not only pouring new wine, that is, new life, into the ministries in which he invites us to participate, but he is also pouring this new wine, this new life into our lives, changing us, transforming us in the process day by day and moment by moment. And so the question for all of us is this, where do you see God at work bringing new life into your circumstances and your situations? Because he is there. We know that God is present. What opportunities, what relationships, what new circumstances is God opening up before you in order that you might receive the new life that he has on offer for you this day? Mary said to the servants there at the wedding, he says, do whatever he tells you to do. She didn't know what he was going to do, but she knew that it would make things right. She said, do whatever he tells you to do. And I believe that this is sage advice for us as well. You see, our task is not to instruct God as to how or when we think he should act. But rather, our task is to take our cue from him. We may not know what he is up to, but take our cue from him both from the example of his life and from the words of life which poured forth from his lips and simply to keep on doing, friends, whatever he asks us to do. For you see, since God is present, we can anticipate, we can expect that this celebration, that the new life will go on. It has not ended, it is only just beginning. So let us, therefore, in the words of Paul to the Galatians, Paul writes, Do not grow weary, friends, in doing what is right. For we will reap at harvest time, he says, if we do not give up. So then, whatever and whenever you have an opportunity, let us work for the good of all, and especially for those of the family of faith. 
And so that is my prayer. That is my admonition for you, for me, for us this day. As we receive the new life that God pours into our hearts and into this community, into our ministries, that we may be reminded, friends, that the celebration has only just begun. Amen. Friends, please stand. And let us now, in the words of the Apostles' Creed, confess and reaffirm the faith of our baptism in our God who will one day look upon us robed in the righteousness of Christ and say to us, these are my children, my beloved, with whom I am well pleased. As we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Universal Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Friends, please sit or kneel as you are able as we pray. In peace, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, in every gathering of Christian believers, you bring together a people of gifts, strengths, and needs to manifest the universal body of Christ. We pray for your church throughout the world that every local congregation may live as sisters and brothers in harmony, showing forth the light of Christ to the world. In the Anglican Church of Canada, we pray for the Executive Director, Will Postma, and the staff of the Primates World Relief and Development Fund. In the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Canada, we pray for the Executive Director, Kieran Achtelstetter, and the staff of the Canadian Lutheran World Relief. In our own Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Church of England, for its bishops, clergy, and lay people. Let us pray, saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In every age, you raise up servant leaders for your people. We pray for all who teach and lead for our bishops Andrew, Rosilla, and Kevin, for our priest Theodore, and for all who serve in the name of Christ. Let us pray, saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the sake of the common good of all people, you create human societies to be places of refuge and human flourishing. We pray for the leaders of the governments around the world and especially for our leaders, for Prime Minister Justin, Premier Doug, Mayor John and all others in public service. May they receive wisdom to exercise government with true justice, grounded in mercy. Let us pray, saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In coming among us, you manifested the abundance of God in creation. We pray for those, particularly those in this community, who are caught in the grip of poverty, lack, or need of any kind. 
We pray for the outreach ministry of the Saints Cafe to the homeless, friendless, and those in need in our community. Strengthen and encourage our coordinator, volunteers, and all who support this work week by week. We pray for all who receive meals, support, and Christian fellowship through this program. Send more laborers into this harvest and grant that your name may be glorified in all that we do and in the lives of all whom we are privileged to serve. Let us pray, saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving Lord, you prepare a banquet in your kingdom for those who love you, and you extend your invitation to all who would receive it. We pray for our friends and visitors today who have responded to the Holy Spirit's invitation to gather for worship. For those joining us now, either in person or online, meet them even now wherever they may be in their area of need. Draw to this community of faith, children, youth, and families. Let the light of your countenance shine upon them that they may sense your presence near and even now may receive your blessings in this moment. Let us pray, saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your son Jesus performed the first of his signs of glory at a wedding in Cana. We pray for all who are joined as family, for husbands and wives, for all who live together in covenant community for mutual support and love, for parents and children, for the aged and the young. Let us pray, saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In Christ, you pour new life into all creation. We pray for those now passing through illness and pain in this life. We remember in particular the following members of this congregation and their caregivers, Alton, Courtney, Carol, Thelma, Maureen, Joe, George, Clifton, Kathleen, Reuben, Nellie, Andrew, Carmen, Rita, Torette, Felicia, Fitzroy, Ian, Pat, Paul, Ethel, Joan, Doreen, Rima, Steve, Hyacinth, and Pauline. We pray for those who have asked this congregation's prayers, especially Thelma Chasto, Evelyn Greenwich, Ruthlyn Hoyt, Yabo Ogondiran, Diane Besesser, Joyce Welcome, Eric and Family, Vaughan Martin, Collis Edwards, Anastasia Brown, Lynette Holder, Erlene Edwards, Valda and Sarita Domingo, Mariel Walters, Shanice Ashmead, Florence Umogbai, Ruth Vern John, Diane Denny, Alyssa Thomas Latoya Athena, and Reverend Sidney Jacob. We pray for all others who we now name before you, either silently or aloud.
Grant that they may know your healing, restoration, wholeness, and salvation. Let us pray, saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you are the giver of all good things. Receive our prayers that we offer for ourselves and for our world. In all things, Grant us the courage to exercise your gifts for the good of our world through Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends, please stand now for the greeting of peace. And I invite those of you hey now YouTubers, gathered with us live let's greet each other. Click your YouTube comment box. Type P-E-A-C-E -E and send. As we continue in this time of the offertory, I would like to invite those of you who may wish to do so, guided by our uh, warden, to come forward and to place an offering in the basket provided at the front. For those joining us now via our live stream, if you'd like to donate in support of this ministry and God's work in this community, I invite you to do so by e-transfer to cw-st. Stephen Downs View at toronto.anglican.ca
Let us now, together in the words of the prayer over the gifts, give God thanks for all that we are privileged to offer this day for the work of ministry. Living God, you have revealed your Son as the Messiah. May we hear his word and follow it, and live as children of light. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever amen
Now as we conclude our time together on this second Sunday after the Epiphany, let us pray. God of glory, you nourish us with bread from heaven. Fill us, O God, now with your Holy Spirit, that through us your light may shine in all the world. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Here are a few items we have been following in our email newsletter. The diocese has asked church buildings to remain closed to the public until at least January 31st. An announcement for February is pending. Subscribe to our email newsletter to stay in the loop. We have updated the live stream replay of Violet Lewis's graveside service to include audio and video of the burial. Thursday Bible study has resumed. Cross-border shipping issues has delayed delivery of the books, but used copies may be available from Amazon. In-person events across the diocese has moved online. Cost to attend and travel has been reduced as a result. Saints Cafe continues. Volunteers needed. We have paper offering envelopes available. Contact the parish office if you would like yours mailed to you. We extend happy birthday wishes to Jessica Ballantyne celebrates today, Sunday, January 16th. Patricia McIntosh celebrates Tuesday, January 18th, and Shirley Archer celebrates Friday, January 21st. For more details on these announcements, go to our website and click News.